a number of years ago, we focused on uh, significant others and affected individuals of those that were involved with a problem gambler and how the problem gambling adversely affected their lives. From that, we developed the, uh, the manual for affected individuals, which really was the romantic partners or significant others. We learned a lot from focus groups and working with a number of these individuals in, in, in clinical work. And from that, we also developed the family member questionnaire for, problem, uh, for gambling problems. And while at this point we're still gathering data on this particular instrument, uh, many clinicians have approached us and said, this is really helpful, can we get a copy of this? Because uh, even the, the questions at face value have uh, utility in clinical work. And uh, so uh, we're providing that to clinicians uh, for their use, uh, recognizing that we don't have cutoff scores or any kind of psychometric properties on the instrument, but that the questions themselves can be incredibly useful uh, in terms of gathering information at, at intake, but also looking at progress in terms of the clinical work throughout therapy. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the family member questionnaire for gambling problems so you could kind of just see kind of some of the domains in which these questions fall. So for example, um, uh, first of all, there are a number of items that are reverse scored. We do that uh, often in, in developing various scales to kind of make sure that people aren't acquiescing and just random responding to questions and, and, and so that they're paying attention. We can tease that out a little bit, but also sometimes questions just lend themselves to being positively worded as opposed to negatively worded. So I want to talk about just briefly about this and then again the, the scale is yours to use clinically with the understanding that we're still developing the psychometrics and we hope that you'll find it valuable just on the face validity of, of a number of the items. So there are a number of items that kind of tap into this idea to which you know a romantic partner or a family member feels empowered or uh, in contrast powerless in the dynamics that exist with the problem gambler. Items 1, 2, items 6, 7, 13, and 17 are all items that fall under this uh, domain of feeling powerless or manipulated or the degree to which they might feel trapped or overly dependent, but uh, th that's kind of one domain. Another domain has to do with this idea of communication with the problem gambler or their extent to which they can be assertive in their communications. And this is uh, items 3, 5, 11, 12, 14, 18, uh, these items tap into that uh, idea, like I can communicate, I'm able to confront the issues, I'm able to discuss these concerns, I'm able to kind of set boundaries, be honest about my feelings, and talk respectfully with the gambler. That, those are items along those lines. Another domain was consequences, and the, these items are items 4, 8, items 12, 22, 24, 27, 28, and 29, and, the, and 30. These are all items about like I neglect my own self-care because of the, uh, the gambling issues, or I feel overwhelmed because of the consequences, I'm, whether or not they can focus on their own goals and priorities about the, because of the gambling problem. Just really, gambling problems eclipse so many other things. Um, maybe they're losing sleep or they've had to put off their own personal interests or they've turned to maladaptive behaviors themselves, overeating, drinking alcohol, drugs, and, and maybe their own addictions in order to, you know, cope. And, and so these items happen to tap into kind of consequences that an individual or romantic partner may have encountered. Another domain has to do with the idea of they feel either hopeless or hopeful, optimistic about their ability to, to work through this issue. Items 9, 10, 16, these are items about their extent to which they feel hopeful, that there's resources that can help them, uh, or they feel discouraged about the future, or you know, regardless, they uh, feel they'll be okay moving forward. And so that's another domain, this idea that they feel optimistic or hopeless. And you can appreciate how these various domains uh, may shift or change over the course of treatment and, and the things, that, the skills that you help them, the therapeutic issues you help them work through and so forth. Another domain has to do with perceived emotional support. These are just point blank items that ask about that, such as items 15, items 19, uh, that really kind of say, hey, I, I, there's people I can turn to that understand or I feel emotional support. And you can appreciate how initially somebody may not feel that. Uh, a lot of times partners, uh, romantic partners come in and they feel like, you know, sometimes they're telling us their story for the very first time. They feel like they can't really talk to anybody and even getting them 
tapped into perhaps support groups or support communities, that could change their entire response to these particular items where they go from feeling like they have no one to feeling like there's a whole community that gets me and understands what I'm going through. Another domain has to do with vigilance, and this is often the extent to which they feel like the partner, the, the gambler is being vigilant, or in some cases, I'm being more vigilant about trying to tackle this issue than the gambler. And these are items 20 and items 23, uh, you know, where I do more to help the problem gambler than what they do for themselves, or I spend too much time, you know, sometimes even more than the gambler. Uh, the final domain is kind of this self-blame, where sometimes romantic partners blame themselves, like it's, you know, uh, the, the, this problem exists. Uh, and so, you know, items 25 and 26 kind of, you know, talk about this. And so uh, I wanted to just kind of talk about these different domains and share them with you and which items tap into these domains. And again, the psychometric properties have yet to uh, help us understand whether or not they, these items fall cleanly and nicely into these, each of these respective domains. But I think for now, these are just some general categories for you to be thinking about. And these categories can kind of help you think about the various domains that you want to target for interventions in treatment with romantic partners in, in psychotherapy. But for now, we hope that you find this instrument valuable in your clinical work. Uh, and it's often I have, when I work with romantic partners or family members, they will say that just the questions themselves were therapeutic. And, and the questions themselves are kind of, uh, an intervention because it helps them think about like, wow, you know, these are all the things, some of these things I haven't really thought about, but yeah, these are things I do need help with, or hey, you know, this actually area I'm actually doing okay with. And we believe it can be a useful tool. And as we continue to develop psychometric properties and data on this instrument, we'll report that uh, in the future. For now, we wanted to put it in your hands and we welcome feedback from you about your clinical use of this instrument and how it's helpful and any other feedback that you might have for changes or uh, updates to this instrument.